Yeah. We live, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say that? Can you do that instead of Joe's? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait, Brian's gonna introduce you. Oh, we live, baby. <laughs> Welcome back to Can You Not? We are still living in the uh, Trump dictatorship. It's April. Are we living? We're all. <laughs> Are thing. we? Are we? We're really this close to war, <laughs> and if you could see my fingers, they're really close together. <laughs> yeah, visual metaphors don't work so well. On we we need to stop. We always do that. <laughs> yeah, half our episodes are just like, look at this picture. I literally, oh my God. I, I went back. Look through. at Amber's face. <laughs> <laughs> I went back through, and I was just listening to op- this is the cold openings, and there was literally just this one that was ten minutes long, and it was Brian and I looking at vegan shoes. <laughs> 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 A reel of all the openings. Just, just all the openings. Just <laughs> one episode of them all put together. We could do a reaction video of uh-huh. us listening to all of our cold openings. Yeah. Maybe that could be our 100th episode. Yes! yes! <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So, we have another classic episode for you. I chose it this time. The topic is colors. Apparently, this is a thing I did not know. Somebody else brought this up to me. Men and women see colors differently. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Is that why my mom thinks I'm always not matching? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so one of the quotes in this article is, Across most of the visible spectrum, males require a slightly longer wavelength than do, than do females in order to experience the same hue. Um, uh, 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 longer wavelengths that are associated with warmer colors, like an orange, for example, may appear redder to a man than to a woman. Like, li- hmm. Likewise, the grass is almost always greener to women than men, to whom verdant, verdant objects appear a bit yellower. Um, the study also found that men are less adept at distinguishing among shades in the center of the color spectrum, like blues, greens, and yellows. And um, men were shown, yeah, where the men shown was in detecting quick changing details from afar, particularly by better tracking the thinner, faster flashing bars within a bank of blinking lights. So they can see things that are moving quickly, fat better, whereas women can perceive differences in colors better. Mm. And, um, hold on, I'm trying to skim this article. Uh, and it says that the vision findings support the so-called hunter-gatherer hypothesis, which argues that the sexes evolved distinct psychological abilities to fit their prehistoric roles. So men have greater sensitivity for fine detail and for rapidly moving stimuli because they were the ones who were hunting, Mm. whereas women are better at distinguishing colors because they had to, like, pick berries and and gather things. Right, so they developed better vision. I thought that was kind of cool. I also thought it was interesting that many, many famous painters are men still. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm. I wonder even, because you hear a lot about how men are more likely, way more likely to be colorblind, too. I yeah. wonder if there's any sort of connection Oh, I'm sure there. it's connected, for sure. Yeah. I always, I've always found that, like, I like female photographers' photos better. Like, really? I feel like I have huh. more female photographers that I look up to than male photographers. I, I think I agree so with maybe, you. So maybe... Maybe that has something to do with it. Well, maybe there is some truth to that. Yeah, bit. maybe I'm not matching. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. She, maybe she can... Pers- I'm not right now. I know I'm not. It's and, awful. I know you there's times see. when I've looked at pants and I'm like, these are totally blue. And someone's like, yeah, those are black. And I'm like, what? <laughs> They're blue. They look blue to me. <laughs> that was the exact argument that me and my mom were having the other day at H&M. And it was killing me. You and your mom go shopping at H&M all the time. Uh, not all the time, but my mother has recently started to like to go shopping with me and recommend things <laughs> that I would not wear, like sweater vests. <laughs> I don't wear sweater vests. I, I s- hate sweater vests. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. I know it's kind of like not a whole lot to talk about, I guess. But like, I just, have you ever like noticed that? Like, because I, I just thought the other thing that I realized too is that I have, um, I have a, a, I guess a wash over my phone so it's like a lot oranger than it usually is because mm-hmm. of like melatonin and things and I'm trying to regulate my sleep schedule and Joe is like that would drive me crazy uh, it would. <laughs> because it like distorts the colors and stuff so like <laughs> wait 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 so the colors in your skull oh my god it's like my phone fo- everything on my phone is orange basically wait like, so what is that supposed to do well blue light w- makes you awake 
whereas yellow light is um, less likely to make you super awake. So if you want to study, you want to be in a bluer light. But if you want to go to sleep, you want oranger lights like around I'm you. Changing Maybe that's why you're. To orange. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Maybe that's why you're so tired all the time because you're always looking at your orange. That shell. must be it. <laughs> there are no other exhausting things in my life <laughs> as a student than that. I do wonder though, because over the past several years, I've been much more in tune about color correcting the, the videos that I edit. And like when I first started making videos and stuff, that's not something I even knew how to to how to do, let alone like mess with. But now, uh, for the most part, with a lot of my videos, I'm very careful to go in and color correct it how I want it to, and add different hues. And if something's too blue because of a particular kind of light, I'll balance it out with some orange or reds. I think I'm much more aware of colors since I've been doing that. Like, for the longest time, I wasn't as aware, I think, of colors in everyday life in terms of, like, thinking about them. But now I'm so much more about what I think looks better with other things. And and even when I'm recording, I can already go, like, even when I'm recording it, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, how am I going to shift the color palette on this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you can learn to train your eye a little better or if it's just, like, nope, that's it. It's just genetic. Well, the other thing, too, is that, like, I don't know, it sounds like it's, it sounds to me like it said it was shifted, so, mm -hmm. like, in order for, I don't know, I guess, like, me and one of you to see the same color, it's just that, like, um, I think it said you see redder things mm -hmm. and, than me, so, like, mm -hmm. I would see green better, mm -hmm. and, like, then the oranges look redder to you, or something like that, I don't remember. I'm in physics, I should know this, but I can't remember <laughs> which way the wavelengths shifted, but, um, so I wonder if, like, you can correct for it because it's just how you see things anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're correcting for what you see normally, right. and what you see normally is the same. Right. So like you're correcting it accurately with what you can see, and that's also accurate for me because if you're correcting it to where you can see it, right, it's the same. Mm. Yeah. I, don't so know. I wonder if my videos like, might look slightly different to women watching it, if it looks a little more off or not. It might look bluer. Yeah. Mm. Huh. But we see things bluer than you do. Right. This bluer is, than you do. Yeah, it's it's that it's that thing where like, this is what I think blue is. Is it the same thing you think blue is? Like, are we nope. perceiving actually the same color? Like, but. that's crazy. I mean, maybe that has something to do. I wonder if it was very different for people when they saw that whole dress thing a couple years ago. Yeah. Oh, I wonder <laughs> if that had anything to do with it. Wow, that actually might have maybe because if like one group of people sees things as bluer than the other group of people the whole idea was is it white and gold or is it blue and blue and black yeah and i think see i saw blue and black more um which i found out was closer to what it actually was but i don't know i wonder again if my my head color correcting abilities changed that at all because because they said part of the reason it looked different was because of the particular lighting that it was in. And if you saw like a professionally shot picture of it, it would look more just very clearly blue and black. But I wonder if like in my head I was like, well, given this lighting, like it's clearly more blue. But I don't know if I would have thought that way several years before that, you know? Right, yeah, I can't, I can only see it as white and gold. So I'm one of those people. But like, um, I don't know. That, I, I wonder if anybody, I feel like that's not the kind of thing people do studies on, but it'd be interesting to see if like more men saw it um, as the blue and more women saw it as the gold, just because that would correspond with what this article is saying. Mm -hmm. If you make the dress go really fast, guys can see it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's off in the distance and it's blinking. Right, yeah, <laughs> it'll be great. Uh, yeah. Do you have any, do you have any colorblind family members or anything, Brian? I think my mom is colorblind. <laughs> But I think it's only, like, the color green. Or, like, she thinks blues are black. Hmm. That's just me. She always says that, like, the color green is gray. Unless it's really, really bright green. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, that's gray. And I'm like, ma, it is clearly green. Hmm. That's my... my what are you, Amber J? Do you have any colorblind people in your family? Uh, not that I know of, but um, my roommate's colorblind. Wait, really? Yeah, James is like really colorblind. I don't know from if I remember knowing that. Um, but uh, it was funny because when he was doing website design for his classes, he would like turn his computer around and go, "Do these colors go together?" Oh. Like James, I don't know. Like I'm not good at this. No. Like yeah, that'd be tricky with designing a website where it's so fundamentally yeah. based. He on just started picking them out of like predetermined. Uh, 
like you know uh-huh. palettes that had already been decided and using them that way but it was kind of funny this know. question just expands outside of color as well but how does he dress himself every day have you seen the way he dresses <laughs> I have he has friend. one pair of pants and then he puts a shirt on over i have it. a friend who uh shelby just reminded me is colorblind uh-huh. and we call him jersey uh-huh and yeah i never thought about the fact that he's colorblind but well he was colorblind because of an incident so huh. wait you can become colorblind because of something yeah I... never heard of that what happened to him if you don't mind me prying i'm not sure exactly what you can tell you, me and Amber and the entire internet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to out him like that. But, uh, yeah. I was interested in how countries pick the color for their flags. Oh, oh that's, that's a good that's one. That's a really interesting topic. Yeah, so I looked it up and I found a few articles here. And I'm going to click on this one. It says countries generally choose colors that have symbolic meaning to them for example on the flag of thailand the red symbolizes blood the white signifies the purity of the people protected by their religion and the blue means the monarchy mm. i feel like one of the most symbolic ones is, Jap- is the japanese flag that's iconic like it's so too. it's so I, I don't want to say easy but i like it's easy to remember like yeah. because it's just it's it's mm. the sun yeah. bam like there it is Exactly. It's actually interesting. There's actually whole communities of people who discuss flags, which is something that you wouldn't think would be Sheldon super interesting. from Big Bang Theory. Oh, really? I, yeah. I don't really watch Big Bang Theory. It's not a show I really enjoy. Yeah, nah. I, don't, I don't like Big Bang Theory either. What? Nah. But, I like science too much to like Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, and I ever since like tuning into some of these weird communities like i have been a little more critical of flags because now i look at ones and i'm like that one's kind of busy that one has like a weird little symbol that'd be hard to duplicate mm-hmm. the uh the country of new zealand actually had a flag referendum uh last year which was pretty interesting but they did something relatively unprecedented for a country that big they had people submit flags, and they kind of mm. made a contest out of it. Huh. So originally, you know, it was like like a Union Jack kind of thing, and it had like in the corner of this blue flag that has a couple stars, um, and uh, they had this big thing where you could go onto this website. Of course, certain people spammed it up, and they would choose like really crappy ones. So. Instead of going entirely with what the public wanted, they kind of picked and choose like ones that were pretty popular mixed with some less popular ones. And then they think they had another vote after that. Um, but they ended up going with several that did not get the majority at all as their final round. And I guess mm-hmm. people were kind of upset about that because they were kind of they're kind of like um, just very. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, very, yeah, not very adventurous, sort of. You know, they were, they're exactly kind of what you'd expect. Um, but there is actually a whole situation where it came down to these final three, right? But there was one called the Red Peak, and it's got, it's, it's a red triangle down at the bottom with a white triangle above it, and then a black triangle and a blue triangle on the side. You have to look it up. Look up the Red Peak flag. Mm. This flag was so popular, and people were so pissed that it didn't make it into the final three that they started a whole social media campaign, and they had, like, petitions and stuff, and they actually, it was so successful, they got the Red Peak flag to be added to the final, uh, final then became th- four instead of three. Wow. So Red Peak did not, or five instead of four i don't know anyway it, they didn't end up winning they ended up going with uh i think they just kind of went with the original flag great <laughs> democracy yeah. hey enough people were just yeah that's funny so i also found this thing that asks why do so many countries use the color red white and blue and their mm. flags. It says one reason is that national colors often adopted as a combination of flamboyant message of national wealth and pragmatic with a pragmatic need for durability. The colors red and blue have traditionally 
use dyes that are relatively easy to make color fast. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I found a kind of cool one. Okay. Bangladesh is um, this red dot, oh. the green mm-hmm. thing. But it says, um, as you may have noticed, the red circle on the flag is slightly off center. I'm going to show it to you again. What? It's, oh. it's not I perfectly centered. That. I did. Okay, I did. and it there says, reason. that is so when the flag is flying on a mast, it will appear to be in the middle. Um, oh. So they did it on purpose. It's kind of cool. Smart. Um, and then the green symbolizes the country of Bangladesh with its green geography and youthfulness, while the red symbolizes the rising, rising sun. But that's really cool that they put it off center. <laughs> like that's, that's awesome. Awesome. I also think it's kind of funny that like people like say this color represents this and this color represents this and there's all these things and blah 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 and yeah. it's just like it's a color. You just there's picked no, a primary color. Like, there's no good standard job. meaning for each color either. <laughs> like. I've heard a lot of people say that the United States flag is kind of a, a poorly designed flag. Because, <laughs> first of all, you have 50 stars in one little tiny corner of it. Like, that's just, like, it's a nightmare. To try. <laughs> and then, like, just so many stripes. Like, it's just it's just busy, a lot of people say. So, not to, like, poop on the American flag here, <laughs> but if you could change it, what would you do? And My why? face. Well, I don't know. My I'd face be- just yes. Amber's <laughs> face. <laughs> And it just says science in the middle. (laughs) Yep. Uh, I don't know why you're being so tepid about it, Brian. Like, people in America aren't, like, overly emotional about their flag and crazy protective about it for no reason at all. Don't get us killed. (laughs) That's all I will say. But what would you do? I mean, I think the colors are already so iconic. Maybe you could still do something that kind of looks like an abstract version of what's already there. Mm. Like, maybe you could have, like... Would you add different shapes? Circles. Mm-hmm. If you could just do like one big star instead of fifty stars. I just googled abstract American flag. One, one big star is the Liberian. Oh, is that the Liberian flag? Yeah, nice try. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so here's kind of a cool thing. Um, the first African country to receive its independence was Ethiopia, and it's credited as um, establishing the green, yellow, and red um, stripes, said, which is the uh, Pan African colors. Uh, so yeah. Ethiopia is Ethiopia is the first one that did that. So that's, that's pretty dope. cool. Huh. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, I know there was one flag. I think there's a state flag that was actually designed by like an eight-year-old or something like that. Let me see if I can... Yeah. Malaysia that. has the United States flag, basically, except it's better because it's not 50 stars in the corner. <laughs> it's, also, it's also see? 14 stripes, I think. Yeah, I 14 like stripes. Better. But instead of, instead of 50 stars, it's a big star and a moon. It's like a sun and a moon, which is cooler. Mm. Oh, cool. wait a second. It was the United States flag. What? The current version of the U.S. flag was proposed by a high school student who initially received only a B minus for his design. <laughs> I hate this culture. <laughs> I pray to God they went back and gave him a. <laughs> Let's talk about the Canadian flag, though. The Canadian flag is dope. I'm very much down for the Canadian flag. Yeah, I like the Canadian flag. I like Canada in general. Yes. I okay. think everybody who doesn't like Trump likes Canada. <laughs> okay, here's the story. So this was recounted in two thousand, uh, sh- recounted shortly before the guy died in two thousand nine. Bob Heft. In an American, he died in two thousand nine. I guess. Oh wait a second. Well, the current version, I guess. Oh, okay, so it's not the original. I was about flag to say. Style. I was like, wait how? a second. How? <laughs> how did he die? In so. Okay. Here's what he, here's what it says. It says in American history class we had to do an outside of class project. We could make or do whatever we wanted, like a science fair or something like that, where you bring your project in. The Betsy Ross story intrigued me. My mom and dad had a 48 star flag they received as a wedding present, which of course meant a lot to them. Well, I took scissors and cut it up. I had never sewn in my life. I watched my mom sew, but I'd never sewn. And since making the flag of our country, I've never sewn again. So anyway, how we get to class, I had my flag on the teacher's desk. The teacher said, what's this thing on my desk? So I got up and approached the desk, and I'm shaking like a leaf. And he says, why have you got too many stars? You don't even know how many states we have. He had added more for the potential new states of Alaska and Hawaii being it. So he just added two stars to it. He didn't... I thought they meant, like, he, like... Yeah, I thought, like, I thought, okay. This is a, okay, this is a little bit different than I thought. But still... Uh, Now, B- wasn't that bad of a grade. However, a friend of mine, Jim, picked up five leaves off the ground. He's taping these leaves down to a notebook and labeling them elm, hickory, maple, and the teacher gave him an A. I was really upset. Teacher said, if you don't like your grade, get it accepted into Washington, then come back and see me, and I might consider changing your grade. 
Two years yeah. later, I'd written 21 letters to the White House, made 18 phone calls, and now you can imagine when my mom got the phone bill. What's this number, I said. Well, Mom, that's the White House. So anyhow, I got this call, and they <laughs> said, the President of the United States is going to call you later today. Well, at that time, Eisenhower was president, and he comes on the phone and said, is this Robert G. Heft? And I said, yes, sir, but you can just call me Bob. He says, I want to know the possibility of you coming to Washington, D.C. on July 4th for the official adoption of the new flag. <laughs> so I have the grade book encased in plastic. My teacher said, I guess it's, if it's good enough for Washington, it's good enough for me. I hereby change your grade to an A. Two years later, though. And that's time. Yes. Oh, <laughs> So but really, what was so different about the 48, 48 oh, stars? The, the person who wrote the article just found somebody in there like, this guy made the flag. Let's talk to him. Because <laughs> uh, it didn't look that different. I'm going right? to add a 51st star for Puerto Rico. And boom. It's like a super And then you're going to get a degree with yep. it instead of getting your grade change. Yep. It'll be great. That's a really controversial topic because I guess... A lot of them really, really do not want to become they a don't. state. And they don't. Some of them do, but like I'm just. You mean Puerto okay. Rican people? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's time once again for our brand new segment, <laughs> scripted sponsors time. Oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> Did you write this one? No, I forgot. I, about I didn't. It. Oh, I didn't get it to you guys in time. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to get out super early next time so that one of you guys can do one. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey Amber. Just one second, Brian. I have to fix my car. It broke down in Joe's apartment. Actually, I just may have an offer that can help you. Brian, how do you keep finding all these amazing deals? Shut the truck up, Joe. Get it, everybody? Because we're talking about cars. That was actually pretty good. I'm so Quality. mad you wrote that in. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to continue what I was talking about in my. E- <laughs> Eternally butter, buttery smooth voice. <sighs> I was going to say that you could fix your car with tools and parts from advanced auto parts. Advanced auto parts? <laughs> what do you think I am? Some kind of dip chewing, grimy hands, country music blaring, overalls wearing, foul swearing, grease monkey? You sure like stereotypes, don't you, Amber? I like grapes. <laughs> if you're interested, you can go to advancedautooffer.com slash can you not for 20% off your first order. Not bad. Do you think they have wheels there? I mean, of course. They have anything you need when it comes to your automobile. Good, because the problem I'm having with my car is that all the wheels are gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys. I was starving. <sighs> it wasn't just Joe. I ate one, too. You guys! I was saving those for dinner. Now I'm just going to have to fly back home. <laughs> Cuckoo! <laughs> oh. oh, God. <laughs> oh, and it just flaps away. You can't hear that. But I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still ravenous for the taste of freshly molded rubber, Brian. What was that you are? You used again? the wrong mold. Oh wait, wait. oh yeah. That's like <laughs> you used the wrong smell oh, of yeah. mold. This is disgusting rubber, in case you were wondering. What was that URL again? Hold on. Uh, that was advancedautooffer.com slash can you not for twenty percent off your first order. I'll come with you. I love the taste of that one with the zigzag treads. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> not gonna be on Instagram later, probably. Yeah. It'd be amazing if someone probably an- animated Facebook. those segments. <laughs> I, I don't really have one particular topic. It's kind of an assortment of interesting color facts. For example, people aren't sure whether the color pink exists. Oh, that's because physically it shouldn't. I'm going to Google this right now. This is a fun one. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> so it turns out pink is actually a combination of red and violet, two colors which if you look at a rainbow are on the opposite sides of the arc. 
Remember the old colors of the rainbow mnemonic, Roy G. Biv? The red is as far as it can get from the B. That's where the trouble lies. Pink can't exist in nature without a little rainbow bending help, which would allow the shades of red and violet to come in. This is an article on time.com, by the way. Just to, <laughs> gives you some credit. It's called, Does the Color Pink Exist? Um, here's what a scientist says. I know, of course, that all colors are just waves of light. So every color we see, we see with our brains. Um, pink is not a real wavelength of light. That's why pink is an invention. It's not a name we give to something out there. Pink isn't out there. So it's just something our brains kind of make up, which is crazy. We are that <laughs> amazing that we made up a color. We made a color. That doesn't exist. It's a combination of two colors. Yeah, it's well, the, uh, I mean, a cool thing, too, is that like our brains are making up that color, right? But there are other animals that have different numbers of rods and cones than we yeah. do. So, like, the mantis, mantis shrimp is the really common example because the oatmeal did a big thing on it. But they have, we have, I don't remember, how, uh, how many rods and cones do people have? We have, uh, oh, that's not the answer I wanted. <laughs> we have, like, a certain number of types of rods and yeah. cones. And mantis shrimp have, like twice as many as that so they can make up they have different colors they see more colors than we do because their eyes have different I sensors to pick eyes. that stuff up <laughs> yeah imagine if you just placed your eyes with the little tiny shrimp's eyes so you just have these oh, giant no. caverns and these little tiny eyes. i don't know a bajillion <laughs> colors right. here's I another would, one is okay. there a way to add rods and cones I don't know if there's a way to get your brain to process that information. Maybe in the future when you program evolution your, programming your babies to see extra colors. That would be nuts. Whoa. I would do that. <laughs> I would definitely program my baby to see extra color. That'd be crazy. So here's another fun fact. So like a lot of <laughs> colors are created by grinding up things and mixing them together with liquids. Well, until 1925, a common shade of brown was made from the flesh of Egyptian mummies. Which is ridiculous. It was first used as a medicinal substance as early as 1300s. Um, virtually all the pigments that were known to painters from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance were also medicines. Um, at some point, someone was just like, I wonder if this ground-up mummy would make a good paint. So in the 1700s, they opened up a supply shop and started, and started selling it as a la momie, or to the mummy. The color really took off, and uh, it was said to be the finest brown. Uh, the Royal Academy of Arts president at the time said it was, said the flesh of mummy, the most fleshy are the best parts. <laughs> so... That's kind of yeah. creepy. So if you see an old painting from the 1700s, 1800s, it might actually have I work dead people at in an it. art museum. <laughs> you probably see oh, no, Brian. dead mummy brown all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I? Can we circle back for a second? Oh, to, to the color okay. pink. Okay. Or the non-existent to, to the mantis pink. shrimp. Okay. Oh. Dogs have two color receptive cones. They have green and blue. Humans have three. We have green, blue, and red. So we can like. Mix the other colors. Our our additional red code enables us to see not only red, but all the colors that are derived from red, like orange and purple. Butterflies have five types of color receptive cones, so we don't have two of them. Mantis shrimp have 16 color receptive cones. What? So, like... That's insane. Yep. (laughs) So pink exists to them and (laughs) some. And, like, lots of some. Like, tons and tons of stuff. That'd be so cool to see. Yeah, and there's a, if you Google a mantis shrimp oatmeal, you can find the comic, because the oatmeal made a whole comic about it, and that's how most people know it. It's here, and we can't see it. You'll also see a recipe for a delicious delicious morning delicacy. I don't think you will. (laughs) I don't agree. Maybe that's why when people are on drugs... They don't get extra cones. <laughs> Let's make a drug that gives you extra cones. <laughs> <laughs> and it just shovels up by the end of the... So, you've seen a lot of paintings by Vincent Van Gogh that use a lot of yellows in them, right? Um, so, they think... They don't know exactly what was up with his mental state, but that color yellow may have contributed to it. Because, it says, because of his technique based on laying thick layers of paint... Van Gogh resorted to colors with high contents of lead, such as white lead or chrome yellow, in the mixtures that he prepared. These pigments are highly toxic in oil paintings, so all that lead that he was breathing in from painting this stuff might have contributed to his poor health, actually. 
which is interesting. It's kind of ill, though. <laughs> yeah. Here's another one. There was spray painting in prehistoric times. Although this spray painting didn't come from cans, the Lasso Caves paintings from about 17,000 years ago were most likely done with a technique that involved spraying paint onto the cave walls. Uh, in the brilliant history of color and art, it is explained, the paint on the great bowl was applied by mixing ground minerals with something liquid and spraying it from the mouth either straight or with a blowpipe, and the tubes would be made from wood, bone, or plant materials. So if you really want to be hardcore, and <laughs> if you're a graffiti artist, just go out and just spit all the paint onto the wall, and oh, you'll God. be able to tap into our ancestors of 17,000 years ago. That kind of reminds me, um, so there's a Cracks.com article. I'm here to supply you with all the best humor on the internet. So far we've hit the oatmeal, now we're on Cracked. Um, but there's an article called Seven Memes That Went Viral Before the Internet Existed. Mm -hmm. And like that just one that I know where, very well is Kilroy Was Here, and it's this guy like sticking uh, his nose up over the wall, and it just I says Kilroy that. Was Here. It's, in, it's at the root in Lakewood. But um, I guess this just started oh, popping up. Like, I think everywhere during, I want to say, the First World War or something. Whoa. Like, and people just started drawing it, like, all <laughs> over the place. Or, I, I can't, I don't have time to read this, but, like, as far as, like, weird old things that keep popping up everywhere, this is a pretty fun article to go through. That's so, pretty cool. I yeah, might yeah, actually yeah. have to read. Maybe we can link that in the show notes yeah. for people to check out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, a red used in royal tapestries was created with ox blood and cow manure. <laughs> so if you don't like the mummy brown of the paintings in your royal palace, maybe you would like to uh, be closer to the ox blood and cow manure tapestries. Um, yeah, it says the fabric was boiled and then mortared with cow dung and oil following by three oil baths. Next were a succession of four sodium carbonate baths followed by washing, galling, and stomaching? A looming and a final clean. Those are a lot of vocabulary That's words. That's a lot of words I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see if there's time for one more. The person who invented the color for... I never know. Is it Levi? The, the jeans? Or is it yeah, Levi. It's Levi. For Levi's blue jeans was only 21 years old. Eliza Lucas is something of a South Carolinian hero as she developed the cash crop of indigo during the colony's early days. In the mid-18th century, she began attempting to grow indigo, but it didn't go well at first. Her first crop was destroyed by frost, Her in the second season was even more disastrous. The mm. third crop was eaten by caterpillars. But, and persistence is often a thread in the history of colors, the fourth crop was just right. And in 1744, Eliza Lucas produced South Carolina's first ever indigo crop. Um... Yeah, so she was only 21, and she was a successful businesswoman at a time when there were not nearly as many successful businesswomen. Woo! And it would later be used for the iconic blue jeans. So. That's what I'm wearing right now. Oh, my God. Let's thank, let's thank Eliza right now for <laughs> Amber's jeans. <laughs> I like my jeans. They're some pretty dope jeans. They are pretty dope. <clears throat> they kind of have that... Wait... Did it come with the rip on the knee? No, they, it They're came just... normal. The, the rip in the knee happened when I worked at Oberlin the first summer because uh, I this was the knee I knelt on when I was doing like stuff like with, right, when I was building. Right. Like when that's it just worked. yeah, and I patched it. There's paint all over. There's a big round stain on my butt because I sat on a paint lid <laughs> by accident. It's great. It's good stuff. Wow, they they have a story to tell though. That's the best kind. Because I never right? get rid of any of my clothes. <laughs> and that's okay. You guys want to check out more? Colorful. And girls. Oh, wait, what? I said you guys. Oh, human said beings. Said girls. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I always no, say guys is a gender it's a, neutral It's a thing. joke. It's oh. a joke. Okay. It's a joke. <laughs> it's fine. I'm paranoid. If you folks would like to check out more colorful episodes, <laughs> you might... <laughs> <laughs> you can go to soundcloud.com slash cynpodcast or the SoundCloud app. We're on iTunes. If you give us a rating, we'll read your rating on the air. Not many people ever review us on iTunes. So if you, you write know. a poem on iTunes <laughs> oh, in the yes. comments, we'll read it on Do air. Do that. That'd be great. Yeah. Or just send in any kind of poem to us. That'd be fun. Send yeah. it to us on our SoundCloud. Or even at canyounotpodcast at gmail.com. Write a poem com. about us. Canyounotpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> or we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're everywhere. You have no excuses. We're in your dreams. We're in your dreams. We're in your heart. We're in your mind. We're in your soul. And we're in your, your thoughts. 
<laughs> Someone wakes up from a nightmare and just hears that bit right there. And they start freaking oh, out. No. <laughs> they fell asleep listening to the podcast. And they started the dreaming about hurt. giant mantis shirt on the color pink. Yeah. <laughs> and mantis oatmeal. Oh no. What did we learn today? Uh, what was my topic? We have too many stars on the flag. That's true. <laughs> According to Jeff. Uh, I think so. I, di- I learned something about flags and I can't remember either of the things I read out loud right now. I learned... I learned April's not great, but I didn't learn that from the podcast. <laughs> I learned that from life. I learned, that's a life lesson. That's a life lesson. And then I learned... I, I learned ground up mummies are oh, in the oh, paintings. I, I learned to be careful at work. Uh, yeah, don't, don't make the ghosts <laughs> mad. Maybe that's why they say don't touch the paintings. Oh, no. I learned that I need to get some oxen blood and manure tapestries for our apartment. Oh, It'll no. look amazing. Jesse's gonna be so happy. It's gonna smell disgusting. <laughs> Jesse has a fork and he's not afraid to use it. <laughs> he, he looks pretty pissed right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have a good candy nut for to this. To those week. who, to the, to the rich. Assholes who ground up mummies to use for paint. Exactly. There we Can go. you not Can you respect not? the no. dead? Can people? you please just not? Can, Can you not? not? When I laugh, I stop having a chin. It's really disgusting. <laughs> I stop having a chin. It just goes away. It's super gross. <laughs>